Welcome to CSN the Network Podcast. This is your host, Kayvon Cutler, with my amazing co-host, Dream Nazario Malik Hampton. How are y'all doing this wonderful morning? I'm good, man. No, happy to be here. Another week to pod. How's everybody doing today? Y'all know me, blessed and highly favored, blessed and highly favored. Good day to be here, great day to pod. All of that, all of that. I'm in a different city today, so uh, I'm excited to explore that. Uh, how you feeling, brother? Uh, as you would say, blessed and highly favored. You know, definitely doing better now that I'm talking to you, too. You stay in a different city, Drizzy. You one of them flight miles up, for sure. Facts. It's really the hotel points. Hey. I'm going finna, I'm finna to have a couple free trips. Hey. <laughs> um, Shout out to all our listeners, man. You know, we appreciate all the love, all the support we've been getting, all the views, the listens. Everybody seems like they were uh filling the interview with Coach Hunter Moles. So again, shout out to Coach. He just uh got a dub last night, Malik and Dre, in the North and South All Star game. He was the head coach for the for the South All Star team. So they got the dub last night. Him and Jay Allen Turner got to share the court one last time. That was dope to see. So yeah, man, just wanted to shout out our supporters, our listeners. And uh, definitely thank Coach. And uh, yeah, man, keep looking out for us. We definitely got more content coming for y'all this summer. More interviews. With that said, man, let's hop right into it, man. Stay tuned. All right, brother. Uh, like you said, we hopping right into it. Um, But before we talk about the best backcourt in an NBA, uh. What was the best duo of all time in the NBA, in you all's opinion? So, look, Lee, Jack I, and Kobe, man. Hey. Jack and Kobe. Hey, my brother. I wanted, I wanted us to pose this question because I know we discussed the, the best backcourt. Definitely wanted to see what you all thought about the best duos. Uh, You know, not to shortchange it, Malik, I'm, I'm with you 1,000%. I'm definitely taking Kobe and Shaq as well. But I want to throw out some other duos that was great. You know, don't want to shortchange anybody. You know, just going all the way back, you know, you had Magic and Kareem. Uh, that was a dope duo. Of course, Jordan and Pippen was crazy. Um, you know, Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas again. I know we mentioned them as far as being a, a, a great backcourt, but that was another great duo. Of course, you know, however you want to pair it, you could say Paul Pierce and KG. Or you know Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, however you want to, however you want to, you know, <laughs> divvy that up. I think the better two of you know out of the three is Paul Pierce and uh, KG. So definitely, you know, definitely could see someone mentioning them. Definitely got a you know LeBron and D Wade, Leak and Dre. They definitely up there. LeBron and Kyrie, definitely up there in my opinion. LeBron and AD is definitely up there in my opinion. Um. Sean Kemp and Gary Payton, I thought was wavy back in the day. Uh, that was a great duo. Malik be trying to disrespect GP. No, I'm this not. What I'm talking about, Dree. So it, we just naming people now. Don't no, nobody <laughs> think Gary Payton and Sean Kemp was the best duo. Like besides <laughs> they family members, bro. Like let's be I'm real. Saying, I'm saying as far as top ten, top ten <laughs> duos. You think they gonna make the top ten? I don't even think they make the top ten. Malik be trying to disrespect I'll, GP for whatever reason. I'll be you honest, know. even uh, not even just that one. I don't think LeBron and AD have lived up to the hype. To be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't put them in the top ten either. I feel you. You know what? I feel you, Dre. They only got of one talent ring. level <laughs> of talent level, and they got a ring. Talent don't oh, matter talent if, level, it, yeah. if if it don't. The production matters. Yeah, if You're it right. don't equate to anything, yeah. it's a lot got, of talented people. You got Paul like Jordan, Kawhi. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put none of them Celtics duos. You yeah. was trying to match to up me. Paul Pierce and KG. I wouldn't. Yeah, they right. underachieved too. Yeah, to me, they yeah. they underachieved. So th it's that's a good cool. Trio between y'all, let me know some other duos y'all think that could be in consideration outside of Jordan and Pippen. There. What do you mean? Outside of Jordan Pippen, 
Like, what are some other duos that could be in consideration outside of Jordan and Pippen? Kobe, Shaq, Steph, Jordan, Shaq, Pippen. Kobe, Jordan, Pippen, Steph, Clay. Uh, Best duo of Steph. all time? Steph and Clay got three rings together. Well, four, but four, see, I was yeah. going to say Steph and KD. I mean, you can say that, but it was only like what they went two rings. Yeah, I mean, you could probably put them in. I mean, maybe, me? yeah, just top ten talent wise, you could probably put them in. You feel me? Like, but I'm I would put Stephen Clay over Stephen KD. As crazy as that sounds, respect. You know, just, they had the better chemistry. Yeah, you know, just what they did to launch all that. You know. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's it's different duos for sure. Like you know. That was good. Like Nash, Nash and uh Nash and, and Lamar Tottermeyer. Yeah, that that's nice. a good one. That was a good duo, you know. Shaq and Penny before Shaq and Penny was a good duo, before even though they got, only got the one finals, you know. <laughs> yeah, before it got hurt. Yeah, like yeah, it's it's a lot of little Shaq duos that you get splurge Shaq in there. And, they Shaq and D Wade, they got one for the one year that they played together. I wouldn't see that's more so D Wade, in my opinion, because if you look back at the numbers, Shaq was averaging like thirteen back then. Because we talked about yeah, he averaged more than thirteen. <laughs> Go look at it, bro. He averaged thirteen, he averaged 13 in the finals. He averaged Are you thirteen about in the, the finals? finals. Yes, in the finals, in the finals maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that year he definitely averaged twenty, bro. Like we no, I think Shaq talked about that recently too. He was just like, I was thinking it up, and I told D Wade, yeah, like, what you wasn't. gonna do? <laughs> he wasn't an old Shaq. I want. I ain't. You know. Yeah. Like that. But yeah. He helped him for sure. Y'all sure. wanted. Y'all wanted it. Oh six or oh seven, Drizzy. Uh, I think it was oh six. Six. Yeah, I think it was oh six. Oh six. He definitely. He averaged twenty and nine because that next year he averaged seventeen. I told you this was his last good year. That first year when he won it with the uh, Heat. That was probably his last good, good year. Yeah. It was. That was the last time he averaged 20. But, so, yeah, I mean, duos, is, is it all varies, man. Yeah. I'm going to throw a duo out there. Of course, you know, this isn't greatest of all time. I would have loved to see how they would have panned out had he stayed late. Stephon Marbury and KG. A lot of people forget Stephon Marbury, young Steph. Oh yeah, he used to play Minnesota. for the team. Yeah. yeah, I would have liked to see how that looked back then, man. Real talk, like how they stayed together. Would like to see that. You got the um, uh, depending on how you want to pair it, uh, with that with that Pistons crew, Chauncey Billups. They kind of like the 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 Celtics, no, in my opinion. They un you know? Underachievers. Not even that that not even that they underachievers, just like, you know, I don't think it's a duo there that you can really pull you know, out. Pull out and put together that really so makes sense. Need as to... far as we talking like best all times, like I know yeah. he was trying to make a top ten. I ain't really trying to make a top ten. I just know it's only a handful of consideration for the best. There's a lot of like sporadic duos for sure. For sure. Yeah. Like Kobe Eddie and Boogie was good together, you know, before they broke that up. Like that would have been crazy to see what that, that would like. Would, man, if boy, yeah. Boogie didn't get hurt, Malik, man, my God, yeah. I would have looked. Yes, they was both averaging 20 and 10 plus. No yeah. problem. It was crazy. Uh, another duo I want to throw out, you know, now you would have thought they would have had more success, Leak and Dree, but AI and Melo, when they played for the Nuggets, you would have thought on paper, you would have thought they would have did something special. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, they put up wasn't numbers. That, wasn't they that they like uh, yeah. coaching, though? Wasn't there something going on with, with the coach? Damn, what's his name? George, George Carl. Carl. George, George Carl, yeah. I See, you can surprised. say that, but they went to the conference finals the next year with the same roster. Only difference was uh, Chauncey was there instead of AI. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I think a better Nuggets duo would be uh, Jamal Murray Jokic. They got a nice little duo, man. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yep. Respect to them boys. Yeah, it's a lot of them, man. But just to be clear, the greatest of all time, you know, in my opinion, the reason why I say Kobe and Shaq, me personally, because you legit had two number one options. Like, that's 
you don't really see that too often. Two legit guys that could be number one options on their team. Of course, you know, Shaq is the most dominant big we've ever seen. Uh, so, you know, you pair that with a skilled guard like a young Kobe that was a just defensive menace, you know, youngest player to make first team all defense. I think uh, that was a match made in heaven, man. Shout out to Jerry West for making that draft uh, decision in reference to trading for Kobe. And uh, also rest in peace to the logo, man. We all West Virginia natives, you know. Uh, so RIP to Zeke. From Cabin Creek, West Virginia, man. Rest in peace to the logo, man. Just want to throw that out there real quick. Rest in peace, Jerry West, man. Rest in peace. I was actually, uh, I just started this series on HBO or on Max. Um, dang, I can't remember what it's called now. But they're portraying him in the Lakers uh, when it was uh, uh, Magic. And when they they were trying to build that team, it's a pretty good series. Winning time is that what it's called? Winning time. Yeah, yeah, winning time. That's exactly what it's called. It's a pretty pretty good series. Um, moving on though, uh, who was the best championship team you've seen? Mm, I feel like it's gonna be a little uh, opinionated. Um. Cause I'm gonna go for what I know. Uh, it's probably you know that, that Miami Heat run with uh Wade, Braun, uh, and Bosch. Uh, more specifically, uh, the the series against the Spurs, where Ray Allen hits the shot, um, to give the Heat uh another opportunity to get the the Dubsky, or just thinking of series overall. Um, I would also probably mention um, the series uh, where the Cavs against the Warriors, where they come back from being down 3-1. Um, that was pretty, you know, that's, that was magical. Yeah, I, li I like those two teams. I'm not going to lie to you. I think, uh, me personally, the best NBA teams that I've seen, or championship teams that I've seen orchestrated, I would say our 01 Lakers team and that uh, you could pick one, but I'm going to say that 18, the 2018 Warriors team that swept the Cavs. Um, I think those are, you know, the top two teams that I've seen in my lifetime that I think could, you know, be in consideration for the best championship teams of all time, um, just as far as how deep the rosters were you know, the different scoring options they had, how they could score inside and out. Um, you know, I, I, I'm definitely jacking that heat, that heat roster. Because you specifically talking about that 2013 heat team, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. The same thing with them. You could pick 12 or 13, like, very strong roster. They went on a crazy win streak. Yeah, they, they did. Won like 20-something like 20 20, games. Yeah, I was about to say 20-plus games. LeBron, oh my gosh, that's that might have been the peak of his athleticism, like in his career. Like I get nervous thinking about how he was in Miami. Like, bro, it was really like a problem. Like athletically, it was just on a different level back then. Um, it was insane. So definitely, uh, but to give my two Malik and Dre, you know, best championship teams I've ever seen. Like I said, that 2000, 2001 Lakers team that went 15 and one in the playoffs and that uh 2018. Um, Warriors team that went 16 and uh, and won in the playoffs, I want to say. So. Um, for me, <clears throat> um, it's probably as far as best championship team I've seen. Uh, to be honest with you, it's probably that, that year uh, – What's that, the 07 or 08 Celtics? Whatever the first year they got put together and won it. That 08, that yeah. Prime. Them or uh, – them or uh, was it the 04 Pistons? Is that when the Pistons won it? Was it 2004? Yes, sir. Yeah, them were probably, like, the two best teams I've seen, like, constructed, like, you know, and just start to finish – just had like championship DNA, like had everything you wanted in the championship team, you know. 
um, as far as go-to scores, you know, uh, specialists, you know, as far as shooters or defensive specialists, you know, like Tony Allen used to play for the Celtics back in the day, you know, Leon Poe, um, James Posey, you know, just some of them, Antoine Walker back then, you know, it's just some, some wild names. That was just good basketball players, you know, I think them are probably like, they're probably the best two teams. Of course, my favorite teams, my favorite, or if I had to go bias wise, of course it'd be, you know, the Heat team, Dree speak of, or, you know, uh, I, I'd say the seventeen Warriors, uh, when they first got K, the first year they got KD, I, I don't know. I just felt like, of course, back then in real time, I felt like Bron had a chance, you know. But seeing KD, you know, just out there with them dudes, you know, just made it because it was already frustrating what the Warriors were doing. Like, you know, he he was locked in watching watching ball back that time, you know they. They would all some way, somehow, like, you know, they was never out of a game. You know what I'm saying? They would always find a way to win a game or a series that you just wouldn't think that they are supposed to win, you know, just because they could shoot so good. You know? um, so, yeah, it would probably be that 17 Warriors, you know, that that 13 Heat. Um, and. uh Yeah, what the O one Lakers didn't y'all like? Didn't they lose like one game in the playoffs or something like that? To AI, yep. Yeah, like yeah, probably that team too. You know. Now I want to ask because you brought up the Pistons, and I know you've seen in the media, you know, Draymond and Rasheed Wallace going at it, bro. <laughs> Enlighten us, Malik, because I already know what you're going to say, but bro, tell us who you think would have won in that matchup, bro. It could it could be the seventeen Warriors or the eighteen Warriors, either one. Versus that 04 Pistons team. Do you think it's as lopsided as Draymond is trying to say, make it seem? Or do you think they got a legit fair shot like Rasheed is trying to say? Bro, I'm going to keep it all the way at being with you. You always do. Um, That Pistons team ain't beating that Warriors <laughs> team, bro, with KD, bro. Rasheed Wallace tripping. They don't got a soul that could guard KD. You know what I'm saying? Tayshaun Prince got the best shot. You know, that's not happening. You know. Um, and then uh bro, they just ain't got I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't think it'll be as I think the Pistons could uh make it a tough series on them. I ain't saying that it'll go seven, you know, it might go six. You know, something like that. You know, I think they might you know, get them out of there in six or something. But they, there's no way they're beating that that Warriors team. Like, it's just – it's not even possible. They shoot way too good. They wouldn't have known what to do, bro. Like, yeah, having to extend the defense, like, like Draymond said, Rip having to, you know, come out there and guard somebody. You know, I love Chauncey too, you know. But Steph can get his shot off on anybody. You know, yeah. we've seen so like yeah, I, I don't I don't think so. Um I, I don't think so at all. But also it depends on what kind of rules they playing by too, bro. Like if if it's kind of like the old school joint where they can rough them up and they can, you know, bully Steph, get some hands on him, make it tough. Like I said, they'd make it a good series for sure. They still wouldn't win, but they'd make it a good series, depending on the rules. If it's the open game that it is now, bro, it's, it's no chance. Like Rip coming off that screen on the elbow, bro, that ain't that. That's that's not enough. He can hit, he can hit that ten times in a row. That's just that's just it's not gonna be enough at all. Not when not if we trading, you know, twos for threes. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? look up, you down twelve. Quick too. You shoot, you shooting fifty five percent as a team. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> right. You know, yeah. The Speaking of, that, uh, what was you about to say, late? I was just saying the three is deadly, bro. Oh, oh, for sure. Uh, you know, speaking of the threes and the Warriors, you know, Steph Curry recently came out in the media and stated that the top five of his era 
no particular order, Malik, is him, Braun, Katie, Kawhi, and Hart. Again, that's Steph, Braun, Katie, Kawhi, Harden. That's his top five of like his era. So I wanted to pose the question, you know, do you agree? Do you think there's any name or or a name, you know, that we could take out and maybe, you know, put someone else in or do you like that that top five? I'm going to go out on the limb here and say, you know, I don't see any changes you can make, um, honestly. I like what Harden was doing. The only one that may be in consideration is Harden. But if you remember that run Harden was going on, you know, from like, what, 2016 to 2020? Bro was going crazy, scoring. How he was able to, you know, just be a menace from a playmaker standpoint on top of scoring. You know what I mean? This is somebody that was averaging 30 plus with eight assists, seven boards. You know, he putting up similar stat lines to what we're what Braun would put up uh, for a couple years, too. So I respect the run he went on, you know. I know he stated in the media as well that he wants to be, you know, look, looked at when his career is over as a winner. That is someone that – I know people are trying to be funny because he didn't win any championships, but he did help build Houston to, you know, a playoff contender, a championship contender. Definitely had them in the Western Conference Finals multiple times with battles – you know, against the Warriors. I feel like, you know, that one year Chris Paul got hurt. We don't know what would have happened late because Chris Paul didn't get hurt that one year where they had the Warriors on the ropes, man. So definitely think, you know, he's a he's a great player, um, had a great career. So that's I'm a, I'm gonna agree it's with, with Steph's top five. But what you think though, Bodie? Um so that means it's so crazy Brian plays so long. So that means D Wade ain't part of Steph's era. Like, is he not considered like D Wade in there? Cause he was playing, you know, when the Warriors, I mean, when the Heat was, you know, constructed, you know, Brian got a game winner on the Warriors back in the day. In the Heat. Uh, We're Wade on the team. Yes, he does. I don't know. I, I guess he's just not considering Wade because I guess Wade was on his way out after that the last couple of years. I don't know. Um, but I'd agree. I'd agree. I don't think I don't think you can really disagree. Uh, yeah, that that's the five. But I don't, I don't got no rebuttals at all. Yeah, Harden was going crazy. Bro. They had people was trying to say that's the best score they've ever seen, bro. He had he had the media tripping, national media, not us. But bro, Harden averaged like 40 for like <laughs> like over a month or something. Like something retarded and it was it was it was insane what Harden was doing. For sure. And if he didn't run into the Warriors, he definitely would have seen got him. Yeah, I ain't gonna say he would have got one. He would have seen the finals though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you right. Yeah, because I don't know about him beating Braun at all, but he right. would have seen the finals. Uh, sure. wanted to also pose this question. You know, with Dan Hurley league turning down the Lakers offer, and with the Lakers being in the process of interviewing JJ Redick this weekend. As we speak, do you feel like that's a bad look for the Lakers organization to a it's two sided, right? So do you think it's a bad look for the organization that a college coach turned down their offer when it looked real lucrative, you know, six years, 70 mil, and then you turn around and you may potentially hire a first time head coach with no NBA coaching experience? Uh, yes, he was a great college player, solid NBA role player. Uh, and I love, you know, his mental, definitely love, you know, his uh, his IQ. And that's been on display in his podcast that he has with Braun. But do you think that's a bad look as far as the Lakers organization right now? Is that a good coaching landing spot? I mean, there's no real evidence of college coaches coming to the NBA and like, you know, 
having like major success, really, you know, especially not in our lifetime. Uh, the best story we probably got is uh, Brad Stevens. He got to move up and be the GM of the Celtics after being the coach, you know, and you see what he constructed uh, going on right now. Um, so, I mean, either way, it was a, uh, a first – their two top candidates seem to be first coaches, you know, first time coaches uh, on the NBA level, uh, regardless. Um, I do think it, it's a bad look because, quite frankly, they lowballed the Hurley dude for real, for real. You know, um, they had made it seem like they was going after JJ because I'm pretty sure JJ interviewed, you know, already, you know. Uh, and then uh, somehow, some way, it changed to like headlines of like Dan Hurley's been their top target the whole time, and uh, they're prepared to make him an offer. And yeah, you know when you the Lakers got legendary coaches, you know what I'm saying they uh, they've got uh, a legendary history, you know, as a franchise. You know, people want to come there, you know, uh, regardless of uh, players. And coaching staff wise, you know, um, and yeah, it, it looks bad, you know, because they, like I said, they, they quite frankly, they lowball, bro. You know, uh, he said it on, you know, when he was talking to Colin Coward, there was a number that could have made him leave. You know, the Lakers didn't reach that number, you know. So essentially, you know, them putting it out there like after they had already made it seem like they was going after JJ, and then. You know, we don't know what happened uh, in those interviews. It switched to that, you know, like, nah, we was really looking at him. And, you know, they making it seem like they going to get him because they about to offer him a bag and essentially offer him the same money he, he getting now, which is why he didn't leave, you know, because, yeah, the Lakers front office is a joke, uh, quite frankly, you know. Um, they ain't really did nothing to to – you know, uh, better the franchise, you know, Brian came there on his own, you know, um, and if you want to give anybody credit, it was magic, you know, who's not there anymore, you know, um, Brian clutch got AD, you know, they, they put the, they put the moves in motion to make sure AD could, you know, come over there, you know, it wasn't Polinka and, uh, Jeannie and, uh, the Rambus, the Rambus family, you know. Uh, so, yeah, essentially, bro, it's been a joke over there, man. Like, the front office really just care about, you know, holding their positions of power, it seems like, you know. Um, and it, it looks bad that – it looks bad that you couldn't lure the college coach who already got his couple rings, you know what I'm saying, who has aspirations of, you know, going up the ladder – uh, if possible, you know, um, yeah, it, it looks like a bad look, but quite frankly, it's, it's not that good of a job, you know, Bron on his way out, you know, AD getting older, you ain't really got no future flips to, I mean, picks to flip, you know, um, no real young players to flip. You got Reeves, you know, um, that's about it, you know. Um, so it's not that good looking of a job. So the fact that they couldn't just drop the bag and get bruh, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that you're going to borrow time with how good the roster's constructed right now. We see how good the roster's constructed right now. I can't get past Denver, you know? Um, so yeah, bruh, it, it's a bad look in totality to me, you know, but I'm still rocking with Brian. I'm still a Lakers fan, you know, hopefully something happens. But, yeah, it's a bad look, bro. And I think it's a bad look from a PR standpoint, you know. First and foremost, you already are dealing with issues, you know, because you're getting backlash stemming from how you handled Darvin Ham, right? Okay, so you let him go after two years, after he led us to the conference finals in his first year. Okay, we making him the scapegoat. I get it. So that wasn't really a splash hire, though, right? I don't want to interrupt. I don't interrupt. And I don't want to advocate for black men losing their jobs. But Darvin Ham had to go. 
He was awful. I agree. No, we said that on here. Egregious. Yeah, Mr. Hands in his pockets. Yeah, no. Yeah. No adjustment. I don't know why they're getting backlash for that. That's all I was really saying. You know, yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how. You know, he's terrible. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you did that. Now everyone is under the impression if you don't do anything in a two-year span, you might be done, right? So it's not a good-looking job because of the pressure that comes with, you know, A, coaching the Lakers off rip because it's a championship standard, championship organization. And right now, like you said, LeBron's on his last run as far as his playing days. So you got to be in contention. You can't waste that. You got to be in contention. You got Bron. You got arguably the greatest player of all time. You have to build around that. And we should be contending for championships. You got to sell out to contend for championships. So it's tough. It's, it's, it's a tough job because you're in a tough position. Yeah, you're selling out to contend, but you don't really have the draft capital to make splash trades to get those type of players that can catapult you, you know, to really be in favorite as far as it's championship. Crazy as it sounds too, bro. Um, Bron and AD still a top duo in the league, bro. Like for sure. Check the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's it's about building around them, bro. Like you, you, yeah, they, it's it's bad right now. And you know, shout out to Kells. He made a good point, man. Like, bro, people in the NBA just don't like doing business with the Lakers. Y'all won't trade with us. And then when, you know, we do pick up a free agent from y'all's team, we overpay them. Then they end up getting hurt. You know, that happened with the uh the dude from the Heat before. Uh, I can't remember his name. Dark skin dude, though. And now it's happening again with Gabe Vincent. It happened with Gabe Vincent. Right? And then we, we getting shooters, 3 and D guys, that, you know, we think can, you know, continue to propel their shooting percentages. You know what I'm saying? And that's just not the case. Uh, we've had multiple guys that season before shot over 40% for three. When they come to L.A., that's not the case. So that's why I personally say I would love to see them add another superstar. That way it's not as much pressure on the role players to consistently perform. Because that's tough, man. L.A. is a tough market. You know, yeah, I'm a diehard Laker fan, but I'm not. You, Y'all know we don't gossip or, you know, speak negatively about people behind their backs. Like, we're going to tell you straight up how we feel. So... Other Laker fans aren't like that. And I'm not saying I'm not knocking any like you're gonna have your opinion. You know what I'm saying? If you have a bad game, you're gonna get killed on social media by Laker fans. They we are very up and down as far as a fan base. We love you when we're doing good and we winning. You play bad one bad game, we could be on a six-game win streak. You have one bad game, two bad games, and that two week span, even though we've been winning, we're gonna be on your line. So it's definitely a tough job on multiple fronts. I do think though, you know. They probably are going to hire JJ, uh, CSN alert. Um, I do think they're going to hire JJ. So it's, it's you know, every new coach is going to have their learning curve, leak and dream, but I do think he can have success and can do good. I think with his IQ, with him being a player, a notable player that people know he'll have the respect of the locker room. Uh, him and Bond have a great rapport, clearly, as you see on the pod, they have great chemistry, as we do. So... We'll see what happens, but yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough to say that that's a, a, a tough spot for my squad. It's just, you know, I won't say the front office is trash, but, you know, you heard years ago that it's hard to trust Rob Palenka. And I can see that, you know, it's, they say it's hard to trust agents. You know what I'm saying? So I do think he's a smart businessman. He did a great job, like I gave him credit on here before, for orchestrating the roster. I just think now, you know, we really kind of need to focus on really building around Bron and AD, really supplying them with formidable players that are really like really slam dunk solid as far as either being a great role player or getting a superstar that, like I said, can make us championship contenders again. So that's my take on it, though. What you think, Drizzy? Um, I, I won't reiterate a lot. I think y'all hit the nail right on the head. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a bad look. Now it looks like you're scrambling, you know. Um, here we are mid-summer, uh, and you all still don't have a, a head coach. So, um, we all know that basketball is 
really year round. Um, if you don't have a team building to figure out how you can tend next year, at this point, you are already behind the eight ball. So to that point, this is a high pressure job, high pressure situation. Um, because of what's at stake, and then you know you you behind the eight ball also. So, um, that's my quick take. My quick take on it. Um, but we're gonna jump into uh back into the finals really quick. Uh, you know, yesterday the Mavs got a big win um against the Celtics in game four. Um, given what we saw last night, um, and in the series so far, do we feel the Mavs have a real chance of coming back in this series? To me, I must say no. Celtics only gotta win one more game. The Mavs don't play defense. Um, I didn't I didn't get to watch the game uh yesterday. I was traveling, but uh I'm assume that it was just, you know, Celtics probably just laid down, you know, a bit seeing the score, you know, that that was a, a, a crazy point difference. But yeah, I'm gonna just say no. Mavs don't they don't have it as far as the roster goes, in my opinion. Cause you got I was talking to my uncle yesterday about it. I'm like, you got Luca. He he gonna give you twenty to thirty, but he also gonna give up twenty to thirty. So that's a wash. You got Kyrie, who, I mean, I feel like he at least tries on defense, but they got giants on the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? So he probably gonna give up fifteen to twenty. So that's a wash, you know. So from there, I I just don't think they have the roster to to hang with the Celtics, in my opinion. And that's, y'all know, as well as I do, the NBA is about matchups, right? And the reason why originally, and I seen someone say this on Twitter last night, they was like, like, why did, what they said was, why did y'all think the Mavs was going to win? Like, what did they show y'all for y'all to think they could beat the Celtics team, right? And I was just thinking, you know, how they was able to play against the Timberwolves, how they were able to guard specifically in that series, I thought that they would be a little better defensively this series because um, we all know they got two of the best, you know, ISO bucket getters in the league, right? So that's not an issue to go get one when it's time to get one. But to your point, you know, I think uh, I love Luca, you know, and this is no disrespect. I think Luca really needs to lock in on his body, uh, like on his fitness, you know, maybe shed a couple pounds, no disrespect, um, so he can move a little better because, I mean, he's – He's too much of a uh, of a great player, you know, a big superstar for him to be a liability on defense like the way he he looks right now in the finals, and that's just keeping it a buck. He got to have some pride, you know, inside of him, and you know this this off season just lock in, man, because they hunting him down, Dre and Lee. They hunting him down, just like they used to hunt Steph down, just like Bond and them used to hunt Steph down. They are hunting Luka down and saying, "Get out the way, go get one," and he is. They getting by him, no problem. So, uh, you know, I definitely think the Celtics just – it just isn't a good matchup for the Mavericks right now, and uh, I'm just being honest. And to keep it all the way, G, they lucky Porzingis isn't playing because what he looked like in game one, I'm like, oh, this going to be a clean sweep. So uh, it's just too much, too much. Drew Holiday, my gosh, he is – he's a menace, man. I love his game uh, just defensively, how he's just constantly putting pressure on you. 94 feet is just crazy, so – that's my take on it. I, to answer the question directly, I don't think they have a, a real shot at coming back. I think it's going to be OV uh, in game five. What you think, Lee? No. <laughs> I don't really got much more to say. I picked the Celtics in five. I should have bet on it. You know. I'm surprised you did. I, you know what? It's so funny. I, uh, in one of my group chats, I was telling them I was going to take Jason Tatum to win finals MVP and the Celtics to win 4-1. That was the bet I was going to put in. Uh, and then I was going to actually change it to JV and still never put it in. But I always had him to five. Though. So, yeah, it's going to be over in five, man. I'm not worried about what happened. The NBA wanted to extend that anyway, you know. Right, that's what everybody's saying. Yeah, like they can't let it go. Uh, sweet. 
just like it, it ain't supposed to look like this in the NBA's eyes, you know. Right. right. Um, especially with that boy Luca. Exactly. Uh, Everybody mm -hmm. had faith in Luca. That's really what it is, bro. Yeah. And it's the T Wolves. They exposed the T Wolves, but it it wasn't to the point of like it was because the Mavs like really exposed them. It was more so like the T Wolves exposed themselves. Like right. the retail not gas. having no coach work, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and being the only one that can go get his own off the dribble so much that they gotta bring in Cal Anderson to play big minutes, you know, just to just to get some penetration. Yeah, it it was a it just glare it just showed holes in the wolves more than it showed like Dallas was like that team to me, for real, for real. For sure, for sure. Um, well, you you kind of mentioned it, um, in reference to JB and Jason Tatum. Uh, who do we feel like is the Finals MVP thus far? Jalen Brown. Yeah, JB right now for sure. Um, they're gonna try to give I, it to Tatum though. I mean, Tatum might be able to steal it with a big closeout game, which is funny enough to say, but. No, nah, I think I think JB is clear cut. Him, uh, Drew's been playing good. You know, um, I think it's it's JB all the way. I had an argument okay. about that too. Like, I feel like the last couple of years, you know, Tatum might be considered the best player on the on the Celtics. You know, the numbers will tell you that. You know, but JB the last two years in the playoffs has been their best player. Like, clear cut. If you've been watching the games, you know, he just got more of that dog in him. You know what I'm saying? Like he 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 more of a, an aggressive type of player, you know, and it, I think it just shows a little more uh, in the bigger yeah. moment. I hey, think... Lake, you can see that in the finals when they played the Warriors. Thank you for stating yeah. that. You can see yeah. that. Like you can see the difference. Like like you said, it's just mentality. I like JB's mentality. You're right. You got a little more grit but, to him, bro. I, I feel it from a... Uh... I think from an offensive perspective, but I'm going to just, uh, you know, play devil's advocate. I think Jason Tatum is, uh, I guess, more valuable because he could do more. Like, on a defensive end, you see you got him guarding post players and, and things like that, kind of holding it down in the in the paint. Um, he's going to – he can guard one through five. You know, on the defensive end, he has to be more locked in than – what Jalen does. I think they have a, a good one-two punch. I don't know if we mentioned them as far as, you know, some talented duos, but they got a good one-two punch where, you know, if Jalen got to lock in um, or Jason has to lock in on the defense end, Jalen can kind of take over uh, from an offensive perspective. Um, and I think uh, JT has really improved, like, his body where he's gotten – way stronger to be able to bang in the paint with with some of those folks versus in years past where we seen him just kind of getting thrown around and, and things of that nature. So um, I definitely feel y'all as far as, you know, who's kind of been taking over the game. Um, but I think JT kind of does the, the, the things that doesn't show up on stat sheets. Yeah, I mean, Jason Tatum is very valuable. You know, he's averaging, you know, double-digit boards. You know, they've asked him to basically play the four and, you know, the offense that they're running. So, I mean, it ain't no shot at JB, uh, uh, Tatum at all, for real, for real. Um, but I will say, though, uh, as far as defensively goes, you know, um, like I said, Jason Tatum has made himself more, you know uh, – like you said, worked on his body, made himself more available to, you know, bang with some bigs. Um, but, uh, you know, before Drew got there, and even when Drew has been here, you know, um, Tay, I mean, JB takes the 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 top matchup, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he normally works that with someone else, you know, um, as far as the best offensive player, uh, you know, perimeter player uh, for the other team. You know, I think they all play good deep. I think the Celtics is a hell of a team. They all play good defense. You know what I'm saying? They all can. That's why it's so hard for the Mavs to do anything right now because you can switch. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can switch everything, you know, and everybody can pick up everybody, you know, which is so, so crazy to see. You know, like Tatum got switched on Luka 
you know, a couple times um, in game three, you know, uh, and, and, and locked him down, you know. Um, but it's 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 no shot at him at all, for real, for real. Uh, Jalen Brown's the highest paid player in the league, you know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't really no uh, no knock to say the highest played player in the league been looking like the best player, you know, on the best team, you know what I mean? It, it kind of falls in line anyway, you know, so. Yeah, shout out to them boys. They got a hell of a team, for real, for real. I, I sure like Kay said, I don't know. Like, the question is simple to me. I don't know what you've seen to make you think the Mavs could be the Celtics. You know, right. That's how I seen it. That's why I called it in five. Yeah, true enough. True enough. Um, I mean, I kind of answered that part, the, the next question. But as far as value goes, I don't know if we need to go into too much detail um between who's who's the the most valuable uh all right bet so moving on we go they all valuable drew had drew was the leading scorer game too you know what right. i'm saying he was they, absolutely they killing short team. quarter you know like, <laughs> like you said yeah. they got they got a good team, team. fire for real great porzingis yeah, was the, probably the better player game one you know what i'm saying right. look how porzingis look game one you know like they got a nice team like yeah you gotta respect it. you gotta respect it. Yeah, they can keep that team together. It's it's scary, scary hours. Um, but moving on, we're gonna get into the to the to the WNBA. Um, a hot topic over the last couple of weeks, um, or a week or so, um, is uh Caitlin Clark, in general, which I'm tired of, but it's okay. <laughs> um, but she was left off the uh, USA team, um. And the question is, is that something that uh, we agree with or not, pretty much? Um, for me, I'm going to say yes, that is something that I agree with, especially knowing the background, knowing that she didn't go to any other workouts, she didn't go to any other tryouts. So for people to just expect she would be put on the team um, is a little baffling to me, um, as well as, you know, we see that, like we said, Earlier, she is on like a kind of ebb and flow. She struggles a bit, um, and she hasn't shown uh, or proven that she could handle uh, herself at the professional level just yet. Where you're talking about um, the Olympics, where it's it's worldwide now. We know the best competition um, as far as basketball goes is usually in the USA. Um, but even with that, I think that uh, the USA is going, they're going to have some tough competition. Because um, when you think of some people that have, have gotten left off of the USA roster um, outside of Caitlin Clark, um, you could say they're big snubs, but not not necessarily. Um, but you think about Arike, uh, she's playing for Nigeria. Um Hey, what's what's the the sister's name? Um, a Blue McKay. They're playing for. She's playing for Nigeria. So, um, you know the the USA is gonna have some competition. Um, so short story short, no, I don't, I don't disagree with the decision to leave her off. Yeah, I'm with you 100. percent You know, especially knowing that background information regarding her not going to any of the workouts or anything. Plus, y'all got to think, too, like, Diana Diana Tarazi, excuse me, there's been times where she didn't make it in her career, and this is after she had success winning the championship and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I get from a business standpoint why people want her to play, but she, has, she hasn't earned it yet. Yeah, I think even with that, though, that's American privilege. We're assuming that... Caitlin Clark is going to translate overseas or whatever the case may be. Like she's the most popular player over here. That doesn't, that's not going to mean anything in reference to the Olympics. You feel what I'm saying? Like I, I get it, but at the same time, I don't, you feel me? Like if you, if you're going to watch the game, watch the game. If not, then don't, you know, <laughs> <sighs> I yeah, gotta go opposite of y'all, man. They got it wrong. They got it completely wrong. Listen, man. All right. It's it's all from a business standpoint, the way I'm looking. 
if you want to grow your game and whether, like Drew said, whether it's going to translate or not, you know it's translating here in America. If you want to grow your game, you might as well take her out there to help grow the game. It's just as simple as that. Like, so push, take her out there to that. sit her on the bench. I mean, she's going to get the play. Me. She gonna, the the USA the USA women's team has not lost a game in I forget the stat it's it's been an astronomical amount of years <laughs> they aren't going to lose to anybody else it's not like you know and I respect that basketball is growing on the men and the women's side but like the the men could have a real problem with some of these teams that they got to play you know what I'm saying we've we've seen the men lose we've seen the men you know not medal before you know what I'm saying like. Uh, the women, it ain't like that. Y'all, they gonna blow everybody out, so she gonna get to play even if it's maybe. just a little bit. It, it ain't maybe. even the maybe. It's definitely you guys. So, like I said, you got Enrique, who is top second in scoring right now. She playing on Nigeria. So is the Blooming K sisters. They playing on Nigeria. So, and then they got a couple of guards too that might be able to give the USA a run for their money. Okay, so for the first time in. An astronomical amount of years, Nigeria might be able to, you know, give the U.S. women uh, a game. It's it's all a business standpoint. If the listen, if they want the WNBA to grow, if they want to make more money, they got to try to capitalize off of this. You know what I'm saying? They got to try to capitalize off of it in some type of way. But to my, I know we we probably not gonna get into it. But for me, it's just creating more like division it's not translating in the fact that you ain't go buy a WNBA league pass you're not going to buy a WNBA league pass like bro said they projected to still lose money so how is it translating yeah we talking about it but it's not translating to dollars dollars make sense well technically it sense. is it's not though. technically it is I mean well ticket sales are up viewership is up that's that's a direct that's a direct reflection of the Caitlin Clark effect. I know I don't people don't like so saying because, that, saying that, but that's real. Like, but check I'm the numbers. Just saying, wait, when, when even when we think about last year, I feel like well, the last couple of years, I feel like the WNBA has on been on a constant uptick. Now it may, and every year it hits a new peak. You feel what I'm saying? At least for the last, I'll say. Three three years, it's been on a constant uptick. So for everybody to say, oh, it's the Caitlin Clark effect. Now, I'm not saying that she doesn't help. She does help. But I feel like it's being overhyped like America always does. We just overhype situations because it's, it's I, not that I serious. Can't, I can't say it's been overhyped because it's just like the record-breaking numbers that they get with viewership when it directly involves Caitlin Clark. The highest watched basketball game, actually the highest watched sporting event of the year this year was a Caitlin Clark basketball game. Like that's that's reality. You know what I'm saying? Like she, the highest selling tickets of uh you know all the games or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you check the numbers, you'll see the uptick. Caitlin Clark, they moving her games to where the Wizards but play. But they also move in Angel Reese's games. They've moved a couple, but I'll, let's also be real. One of the games that they talking about that they moved, who was they playing? They was playing Caitlin Clark's team. That's just the reality of it. Now, if 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 all right, if we want to get real about this, if we want to get real about it, the, what really needs to happen? Angel Reese needs to work on her game to be able to help so uh, to help Clark. leverage this. So does Caitlin Clark. She's on the worst team in the league. That's not directly that. No, so it, you putting all that no, on Caitlin from Clark a, from. From a roster standpoint, they have Caitlin Clark. They have, I'm not putting that on her. It's the coach's fault. That's really what we need to be talking about. They have Caitlin Clark. They have Aaliyah Boston, who was last year's number one draft pick. They have Aaliyah Boston. Let's Kel talk about her. Let's talk they, about Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah she, Boston. She got word. No, she's not getting a ball. She's getting trash buckets. How do you how do you have a number one draft pick from last year? You have an NCAA player of the year, all of that stuff. And the only way she's getting her points is off garbage buckets. She's getting long rebound, stuff like that. That's how she's getting her points. They're not giving her the ball. And if you haven't watched the game, don't say nothing, bro. I'm trying to tell you, they're not even giving her the ball, that bro. Is, that and, is and when terrible. they do, and when they do, 
you see it translates. Like last, I think it's two games ago, she actually got ball, got got touches, got more than double. She got double digit shots, and she had twenty something points. See now that's and the thing. Win. That's the thing. This girl don't do nothing but hoop. We gotta be real, man. She don't do nothing but hoop. She don't do nothing but if she talking trash, she talking trash on the court. You know what I'm saying? This stuff is translating off the court because people hating. And I can say what people are you hating. talking about? I can say people hating because Aaliyah Boston's best friend just came out and was talking trash about Caitlin Clark just, just uh, two days ago. Like, what are, what are we having division for no, between nobody, our team? You're supposed to be helpful. No, I'm saying it's creating division in the game. I'm not saying on the team. You strictly negated the fact that they're not giving Aaliyah Boston the ball at all. So we do, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Kayla Clark, she has, regardless of what you say, she's a talented player, right? All people are trying to say is is the hype. They're overhyping it. They're overdoing it. Right. She can be cool. Every every rookie struggles. They even tried to give her a grace. But you saying all she does is hoop. If you're going to be the face of the WNBA, you have a responsibility to either negate or oh, try to bring, drink, bring people together. If Braun, as the face of the NBA, just lets, you know, all the narrative runs or, or run or do whatever, blah, blah, whatever the case may be, how she is just hooping is... It's either take it or leave it to me, right? You can't be one foot in, one foot out, like, oh, all I want to do is play basketball, but not acknowledge the fact that it's divisive. And we know, and I think that's the part, too. You saying it's hating, but we know why all of a sudden this, I'm not going to call her, uh, she because she's a great talent, but it's not like she's super athletic. It's not like you can't build another Caitlin Clark, is what I'm saying. You can find you can. somebody. Yes, I mean, you, yes, can, you can, but you you yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can. You can. You can. You can. One. Because you can. Caitlin, you she she was one, on yeah. the she was on a perfect team at the perfect time with the perfect coach. We talked about. No yes, sense, it does. Man. Yes, it does. Hate, it makes it makes plenty of sense. It makes plenty of sense. We've talked about it time and time again. We talked about it. Time and time Man. again, bro. Even when we talk about uh Man. what was the interview we did uh with um Elmore, he's on the perfect team at the perfect time, bro. If you on a John different Elmore team, nice as much as people don't want to he nice. He, he is nice, he is nice, but you on a but you when you think about talent, you from a from a, you, we could talk about any athlete. We talk about Jordan, blah, blah, blah. Those are perfect situations at the perfect time. You can call it God ordained, whatever the case may be. There were people that were more talented than them that didn't have the perfect opportunity at the perfect time. But anyway, going back to my point. Man, it's that because is, that the, is cap, no, listen, man. listen. She's the all-time leading no. scorer. You talking about she... Is perfect timing. No, that's called it perfect, was perfect jump shot. Timing. It that's was perfect, perfect timing. Training. No, it's perfect timing. It's because it, if if that was the case, then it would translate, brother. And what it's do you not mean? She's averaging right almost now. twenty points. When also she's shooting thirty times a game. She's not shooting thirty times a game. She's not. And you want to you want to be technical. 20, 20. Now let's get let's get real. Aaliyah Boston averages more field goal attempts than she did last year. Uh, this year, she averages more. She's getting more shots than she did last year than she is this year. And her points per game has dropped over three points per game. Because she's, she's averaging not, more turnovers this year than she stats, averaged last year. But you're not watching the game. She's not getting touches, bro. They are shooting Man, jump shots. She averaged more blocks last year than this year. So what does that have to do with her defense? They don't have she averaged over a block a game defense. last year. She don't average a block a game this year. So what they got to do? Right. Is, let's let's stop talking about have, offense. What does they, they got to do? They don't have defense. nothing to do with. They don't have nothing to do with defense. But again, if you're watching a game, all she's doing is running baseline to baseline, trying to play defense. When you also have Caitlin Clark, who is averaging probably more turnovers than their point guard last year. So therefore. You can't if you if you starting the at the block. Is, how are you going? The funny thing about to... it is everybody's just struggling on Kaylin's. Everybody's just so focused on her shooting percentage. And I'm person who 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 uh, values efficiency too. But y'all got it. Y'all got y'all. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing to see. K K K. She's already almost averaging twenty points already as a rookie. Bruh, she's going to kill soon. Like absolutely kill. Like it's it's 
But it's that's a no the brainer. point. That's the thing. We're not saying that she won't. Give her time to be that, to grow into the player that she has the capability to be. Don't try to make her to start a league and then make excuses for when she's not showing star caliber players. You have people who are way better than her, who are averaging more points, who are better uh, uh, in an efficient standpoint that deserve that credit. And the only reason, I'm not going to say the only reason, but a lot of the reason that she is getting that credit for the face of the league is because of who she is and what she looks like. And that's the real issue. A the lot only, of people that's not true. It's because people... she can hoop because she, no, brought, it's... she brought a how? fan base with her. How? If they are losing. If you're saying – that's the – let it again if we if we translate it to the NBA and it's the best player and he's not winning, is it going is it gonna be the same conversation? No, it's not. It's no. not. We're yeah, not just talking the, about the NBA's oh, business she can model hoop. looks completely different than the WNBA's business model. And the fact that, that they've been complaining about less treatment, less pay, and everything for so long in the WNBA, when you finally get some attention and some viewership and they're trying to push it and trying to help it out, you got the girls out there taking cheap shots at the oh, girl for no God. reason. Bruh, but you can tell you wanted a new. That's real. Say, but the, again, the WNBA has always been. What do you? What do y'all want her to do, people to do? Lay down. I'm not like, saying people oh, can't go out there and try and bust Taylor, their ass. Go, go score forty points. No, it's but not supposed to be hard are, for you at all. Egregious. What are you talking about, bro? Cheap shots is egregious. You, no, hey y'all, they, hey y'all. Cheap shots is egregious. And for we, Leah we Boston not to step it, up and help ha- her teammate, it it's happens egregious. regardless. It happens regardless. In, you're you're competing, and regardless for anybody to say, "Oh, uh, they taking cheap shots at blah blah blah," you're not protecting any other player in that manner. They Man, are she competing. got teammates that won't they protect are, her. That lets they you are know competing. what type of problem we got. They are competing. What are hey, you uh, talking about? I'm, we, this we is got my a problem. livelihood. Hey, how? you play with how many white boys? How many white boys you done play with, K? A bunch of them. Yeah. How many of you done been up and lined up between? If anybody with a cheap shot at one of your homies out there on the field, it's a problem. 100%. If you got teammates that's looking away just because the girl white and she getting attention and you ain't getting the same attention, no. You that's that's the, unfair you to, to say. That's up. unfair to say because you don't know what their team camaraderie is. You don't know if Caitlin Clark is going to show up for them either. So what are you talking about? Hold her to the Why same standard is that y'all holding everybody else. Oh, she's supposed. They supposed to just jump in or whatever the case may be. Yes, when she yeah, talking I shit, expect, now, she talking shit anything, too. When it comes to team she, sports, I expect for you to ride for me because I'm a ride for you. I don't care if I don't like you. I didn't fight teammates. I didn't legit have fist fights with teammates. But when the when, <laughs> when we get the when we strap the pads on, we get between the lines. All we that is done. You, for you, each you other. making it a Caitlin Clark each other. issue? You but making look, it we, a Caitlin Clark issue? But it it could be really a team issue. They suck, bro. They yeah. suck. They have a, a a probably a losing culture. Who I don't care. That could be it too. That could be it too. And she part of it. I'm gonna call in Leah Boston now. She got words. I don't, don't want to hear hey, them, the offense ain't look, coming through her. She got words. Look, y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. We you, went off, you tripping? We went off on a tangent. All right, let's reel it. Let's reel it back. Bro, they should have took Kaylin. Bro, the reason why they ain't gonna be able. I'm gonna be real with you. Dree, Dree's right. It is the uptick. But the uptick is too slow. If y'all want something, if y'all need, y'all want the, the WNBA to jump, bro. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta capitalize off of this when you when you get spikes like this. Juju gonna be the next spike. I'm letting you know now. Juju gonna be the next spike, and she already get Nike commercials. So I don't hear nobody saying nothing about them pushing Juju because she gonna be the same type of problem. So we got a black girl coming up. It ain't black and white. It's about the game. But that's it's that's about the, the game. Yeah. Dream. But then, no, no, don't, say nothing, Dre, not. don't say nothing, Dre. <laughs> you keep saying last that there's point, talented, last point, last point, because we got to move on. Just as much talented women as Caitlin Clark or more talented. And I agree. I'm not saying that. But when it comes to situations, there hasn't been girls in situations. We can see how, however many years it has. Don Staley, whatever. And I see all the, all the articles they wrote about Don every, bro. When people gra- people gravitate to what they gravitate to, they're not gravitating to it just because Caitlin Clark is white. Of course, she is white, so it helps out. She's going to have a bigger fan base. We know where we're from, of course. But people are gravitating to Caitlin Clark because how she, how she plays. The same way with Juju. 
Juju, Juju gonna be able to almost break all of Caitlin Clark records, or she gonna she gonna be right on her heels because of how she gets to play as well, how she gets to 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 showcase her skill. It's a skill thing, especially when it comes to the male eyes. I'm just keeping it all the way real with you. Like like you said, it's been talented girls, but the reason why men don't stay locked in onto the women's game is because it's not that entertaining to them. The way that you guys play is not that entertaining to them. Yes, the fundamentals is there, the X's and O's is there, but the casual fan likes entertainment. That's why you can have players that get hyped up for no reason that are just good at dunking the ball or something. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 just purely entertainment. So what you have now is entertainment with with Caitlin. Yeah, it's she, a better she, game she, now for sure. She plays a different type of game. And I'm yeah, giving so. Juju the same credit because I think Juju better than Caitlin Clark right now. But right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not even saying Kate Clark the best thing since sliced bread. I'm just saying how she plays it, it. How she plays captured a fan base, and if the WNBA wants to grow, they might as well try to capitalize off of it. And that's going down to the girls. I'm not saying the girls got to let her do anything out there. Try to bust her ass. You know what I'm saying? But the extras, the extras, and and the 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 press conferences about racial tension and saying. Because a reporter's asking a TMZ reporter's asking a, a question off of a bus, now they getting harassed and all that stuff. Like, no, that's what comes with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be able to capitalize it, capitalize off of it, and not try to feed into the tension part. The tension part is is blowing up right now. But if no, they I'm... if if they actually capitalize off of these eyes that they got, they would know that girl from the links is averaging uh damn near a triple double. The the, the point the light skin girl out there for the links, I forget her name. But she averaging nah, but like 20, 26, 8, and 7 or something like that. Crazy. Like, you got to you work with you gotta it. You got to capitalize now, nah, for sure. Capitalize. Nah. Point, point made. Real quick, though, because we we uh, we uh got to move on, though, y'all. Because we spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> but look, real quick, man. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention tonight's the big fight, you know, for my boxing fans. You know, you got Tank Davis versus Frank Martin. Real quick before we close out. Who y'all got tonight, man? This is uh Tank Davis's first fight in over a year since he fought Ryan Garcia. His first fight since he's been released from jail. So I'm taking Tank Davis. I'm gonna go out on the limb and start start mine. Of course, you know what I'm saying. I'm taking him by knockout, but don't be surprised if Frank Martin wins. But I I just think it's too early in the game for the young bull. What y'all think? You know, I don't really watch too much boxing. Only a couple fighters I, you know, keep tabs on. So I'm taking Tank too. But I'm gonna be real with you, just just to say this, to put this out there, uh, that uh that weight bullying, whatever they call it, they gotta stop that, bro. Cause Frank Marlin look he looked crazy at the uh at the, the, at last the weigh -ins. he definitely yeah, looked you know different for sure. He looked Cause he crazy. Kinda swole, yeah. His his face was all dented in, you know what I'm saying? He kept telling the he kept trying to walk away from the reporter to go eat and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like that that joint looked crazy, but I'm taking Tank too, you know what I'm saying? I don't know much about Frank Martin, you know what I'm saying? So excuse my ignorance. Yeah, me either. So I'm going to just go with the popular vote. <laughs> Tank Word. Davis. I'll, I'll I did. I know we did get off on a tangent, but I did want to highlight some other people just real quick on the WNBA. We talk about. Um, you you know the girl from Lynx I'm talking about? Yeah, she Kayla on the McBride. List? Okay. Um, she she's doing doing big things. Uh, Connecticut is actually sitting at number one in the league at eleven and one, followed by the New York Liberty at eleven and two. Um, surprisingly, the the defending champs are sitting in at the fifth seed. Um, currently, uh, they're playing without their uh, star point guard Chelsea Gray, which probably has something to do with it. Um, but even with that, Aja Wilson is leading the league in um, points, uh, averaging twenty eight almost 29 points a game um, and almost 12 rebounds a game and 11.7 and uh, 2.6 blocks a game. So she's having a, a, a MVP type year. Um, again, like I mentioned, a, a Bluma Wale, a Gluma Wale, excuse me, uh, is second in the league and scoring at 26.2. Uh, Kalia Cooper rounds that out at the number three spot at 23.5. Um, other rookies, standout rookies, Angel is averaging 10 uh, rebounds a game, where Cameron Brink is in the top five in the league uh, uh, from a block standpoint, 
averaging 2.7 blocks, almost three blocks. Um, and then another standout rookie that a lot of people aren't talking about is Aaliyah Edwards. Um, she's making a big stand after the team went uh, 0-12 in their first you know, 12 games. Um, she's helped them win their last two. She's currently averaging nine points, uh, 6.5 rebounds, and uh, one assist. So just a quick highlight. Now, you know, we appreciate it, gang. Speaking of appreciation, um, you know, I appreciate y'all, you know, locking in this morning. That's great content. Y'all, y'all too. Hey, people love when y'all go at it. Y'all, y'all be cracking me up. I had to, had to reel it back in though. You know what I'm saying? Um, as always, man, we appreciate the support. Please continue to like, subscribe, share, and view the content. This your boy K. I'm with Leak the God and Drizzy, and we out, man. Peace and blessings. Peace. Peace.